this is our topic tonight trash or treasure trash or treasure I want that to sink in there let everybody that's watching on Facebook somebody might want to take a picture trash or treasure trash or treasure Elder Shirley has been teaching on crowns. Um, there is a two part, there's a two part to this lesson. There's crowns and there's also rewards. Two, two different things. Sometimes scripture talks about crowns, refers to crowns as rewards. But not only should we be doing what we do to obtain crowns, but we should strive for rewards too. So this is a companion lesson to Elder Shirley's uh, teaching on crowns. Please pray for her. She's in the process. She's not in the hospital anymore, um, but we want her to get her wind back. She needs her wind back. When she talks a lot, she starts coughing. And so we want to pray. We pray for uh, the sick this evening and declare God's word according to James 5 over the sick. If, if there's any sick among you, call for the elders of the church and they'll anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith. That's how we have to pray, y'all, the prayer of faith. There is an attack. Um, I, I'm seeing uh, the children are being attacked, you know, with health issues, monkeypox. It seems like these things are coming, you know, for our young people. So we got to stay on the wall and bind the devil on every side. He's a defeated foe. So let us get ready. Our lesson tonight, what is it, y'all? Tell me what it is, somebody. Trash or treasure? <laughs> all right so i want to lean toward rewards so this is a companion to shirley's teaching rewards and crowns or crowns and rewards uh, my foundational scripture for tonight comes from the book of first corinthians chapter three and this uh scripture really answers you're going to see uh the title of tonight's lesson in this scripture trash or treasure and it's a question it's a question so follow me get your bibles get your pens those of you that don't hang around in this room y'all missing some good stuff here amen first corinthians chapter three we are going to drop in at verse number six, 1 Corinthians chapter three. Verse number six is where we're going to start reading. And with our thought being trash or treasure, and we are dealing with rewards tonight. Somebody just dropped out a lot of phone issues too tonight. Uh, let's see. So, now, let me see, y'all. We are all familiar with the scripture Paul said, one plants, another waters, and God gives the increase. That's the way uh, ministry should work, and especially when we're out witnessing. One plants, and when we get that in our mind, at one point in time, the Lord told me I was trying to plant and water. And he said, uh, one plants, another waters. Listen, this, this, this gives us hope concerning our children because it seems like, you know, what we do in terms of training our children, it's like it takes a while and it's hard for us to reach our own children. But how many at, know that as parents, we have planted some seeds? They're in there. The seeds are in our children. You planted them. 
Isn't that something? I think me and Jill had a conversation this week how when I was uh, when we were ministering in the juvenile center, very heavy, we had the entire juvenile center and minister to those kids on a regular basis in the gymnasium, the whole juvenile center. And the devil tried to tell me, you got some nerve out here ministering to these kids and your kids are going to hell. And the Lord told me, he said, as long as you do what I tell you to do, you keep ministering to these kids, I will send someone to minister to yours. One plants, another waters. And God gives the increase. God's going to give what's necessary for growth. Come on, y'all. And look, you know, I'm always led by the spirit. You know why we don't see growth a lot of times? Is because the germination process takes place under dirt. I, I, I wish I could, I feel like throwing my shoe. You don't know what God is doing. You don't know how the roots, what they doing. All you see is the dirt. You don't know what's going on under the dirt. You don't know that there is a process called germination under the dirt before it sprouts. Amen. Before you see the manifestation, the work is being done in the dirt. I got to stay on the ground. I got to stay on the ground. This gives us, helps us with patience which is a virtue just knowing you did what you were supposed to do you put that seed in the ground in them and somebody is going to water it and god is going to give the increase well anyway this is where you know that was a preface for this text in first corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 6 Paul is the author. Paul said, I have planted in verse six. He said, I have planted. And, and, and uh, let me see. If I hit a crown tonight, it would be the crown of, uh, let's see, which one would this be? The crown of rejoicing. If I hit it, because the crown of rejoicing goes to those who are are soul winners so look now look at paul he said i planted i've been winning souls i planted apollos watered but god gave the increase the increase is the church at corinth he did the work paul did the work i planted I sent Apollos, he watered, and God gave the increase. So you are my jewel. Crowns have jewels, y'all. Jewels are souls. And God said, all souls are mine. So Paul is saying, I, I put the work in. I discipled you. I told you about the Lord Jesus Christ. I have planted. Apollos watered and God gave me the church at Corinth. God gave me the increase. You are my jewel. Can I go a little further? Verse seven. So then watch this. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth. You ain't nothing, God, but a vessel that God used. Don't get the big head. Don't never get the big head because you want some souls, all the credit and glory goes to God. So then neither is he that planteth, you ain't nothing, neither is he that watereth, but it's God that giveth the increase. Eee! Listen, let me read a little further, then I'm gonna get y'all in here. He says, now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Come on, we unified. Don't be arguing over who's planting and who water. Amen. We in this thing together. Planting in the water is necessary. 
Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And watch this, because we're talking about rewards. Go hand in hand with crowns. Again, verse 8, now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Can I say that part again, the last part? Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. And if you really magnify this, this is dealing with soul winning. Soul winning. And I'm going to read one more verse nine. For we are laborers together with God. This is a partnership. This is a collaboration. Yes, yeah, Sean. We are in partnership with God. Them 12 disciples were in partnership with Jesus. It was a partnership. We in this together. We are laborers. A laborer is a worker. And we're working in, uh, the world is the field. One scripture said, the, what is it? How's it go? The, uh, 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 the field is plenteous. Something is plenteous. The field is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And he said, pray ye that the Lord send laborers at Komosha into the vineyard. That's the key word. Field, vineyard. The world is the vineyard. Mm. My God, so we are co-laborers. I like that together with God. We are in partnership with God. We are God's husbandry and we are God's building. Now, remember, we're getting ready to um, hone in on our title tonight, Trash or Treasure. It's all about motives. Let me know y'all out there on Facebook. I don't see no interaction. I see Christ is in my crisis. I see we're still here. Hey, Dusty, throw me off some hearts and some likes so I can see that you guys are there. Amen. So I'm ready for a reader. And I want that reader to begin again at verse number nine. And... uh and read just nine and 10, because I need to take this a little slow. Thank you, Cassandra. Thank you for the hearts. We're talking about rewards tonight that go hand in hand with crowns. And we're talking about our title. We gave it a title tonight, Trash or Treasure. Come on, read a verse nine and 10. For well, we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation mm. and another build it thereon, but let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. Wow. Wow. Now, come on now, Paul. Now he's winning churches. You know, he is the apostle, Paul. Amen. He's the apostle to many churches that he founded. Amen. And so he's saying here that he is a wise master builder. So are we. We're going to take this off the page. We are wise master builders. Paul said, I've laid the foundation. I always think about Pastor Graves. He laid a good foundation. Now, of course, we know, amen, that the, the main foundation is Jesus Christ. Amen. Then you have leaders that come and they build on that foundation. Come on. And he laid a good foundation. Good enough that we could continue after him. May the foundation that I laid 
continue on after I'm out of here. Church shouldn't stop because we left. Come on. So Paul said he was a wise master builder. He said, I've laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But then he gives a warning. Let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Be mindful, be careful of what you are building on this foundation. Don't put no watered down gospel. Come on, somebody. Something that's going to crumble. Don't put too much sugar on it. I wish I had me a church. We got a good foundation. We continuing this. Now don't put no junk, cotton candy and cookies. And sh uh, 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 yeah, cotton candy. That's about the sweetest thing you can get. So take heed how you're building. Tell the truth in love. Hallelujah, my God. You know, we're living in a time where people are telling people what they want to hear because it's profitable. But they're going to have to answer to God. The question is, is it trash or is it a treasure? Let every man take heed how he build their on, their upon. Uh, come on, reader, give me 11 and 12. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So it's, it's worded there kind of confusing, but here's what it means. Jesus Christ is the foundation. You can't look, you can't try to, uh, let's see. I, I'm thinking about my little concrete porch. It's got cracks and stuff in it and pieces of the concrete missing and basically all it really needs is a, a overlay come on of some more concrete on top of that to smooth it all out Amen. so what this is saying jesus christ is the foundation jesus is the truth he is the way he's the life no man comes to the father but by jesus there is no other way Buddha is not the way. Amen. Muhammad, he's not the way. Amen. Hear me loud and clear. There is Amen. no other foundation. Amen. The foundation has been laid. Amen. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. Amen. And as long as we build on that, Messiah, are y'all here tonight? Amen. That's all it's saying. Jesus Christ, don't get it twisted. He is, watch this, not only is he the foundation, he is the chief cornerstone yeah. that holds it all together. Hey, glory to God. So he's given us a wonderful foundation to build on. Be careful how you build. Are you building trash or treasure? Trash won't last. Somebody right, say that. Man. I'm trash a poet tonight. Happen. Come on, say that. Trash won't last. Trash won't last. Come on, but treasure will last. Yes. Come on, won't it? Didn't yes. the scripture say build not for yourself treasures on earth where moth come in and it rusts? But if you build treasures, and I'm paraphrasing big time, in heaven, it's going to last. All right, amen. Trash won't last. So give me 11 again. Go back and give me, then give me 12. 11 For and 12. Foundation can no man lay that, then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, Silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. All right, stop. And I know that's a semicolon. So God has given us tools to work with, to build upon. They are mentioned here in verse number 12. He's given us gold. He's given us silver, 
precious stones. Those, uh, what I don't want to call them products, but I'm going to keep calling them tools. Those tools will last. Gold, silver, precious stones are almost imperishable. They'll last. God has also given us choice. He's also giving you wood, hay, and stubble. Yes. Wood, hay, and stubble are compared to trash. Yes. So get this tonight. Some people are building on the foundation that Jesus laid with wood, hay, and stubble. God desires for us to build on the foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, things that will last. I want to tell you that this all ties into rewards, as Elder Shirley has, has let us know, and I've said over and over, that we're going to receive rewards. God is going to weigh our motives. In other words, why did you do what you did? What was the motive behind what you did? And sometimes when we go before God, I believe that some things we won't receive reward for because we got our reward right here on earth. Come on, y'all. We're still dealing here with how, how we work in order to receive rewards, not for salvation, but for rewards and crowns. God judges the motive of why you did what you did. Did you do it to receive the applause of men? You got it. Up here, you're not getting anything for it because that was not gold. It was not silver. It was not precious stone. That was wood, hay, and stubble. I'm going to make it make sense as we, as we go plow a little bit more through here. Let me see. This is going down. Give me 12 and 13 again, Elder Melvina. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Okay, I want to take my time. I want to go back to 12 and make sure you get it. Because of choice, you get to use what you're going to build with. God always put choice out there from the beginning. Adam and Eve had a choice. There's all these trees out here. There's also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I'm not going to remove it from you. I'm going to tell you how to build, what to eat, what not to eat, and then the choice will be yours. So here are these, these uh, elements, if you will. God's putting it there. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. You choose what you're going to build with. Now, when we talk about rewards, and crowns, Elder Shirley's already told us. After the resurrection, after we are resurrected, believers go before the judgment seat of Christ to receive rewards and crowns. That's what I want you to really put in your mind. It's not just crowns, it's rewards and crowns. Okay? The, the the believers, our works will be tried by fire. It has this idea. Okay, so you went to feed the homeless. I saw that on January the 1st, 2020, you fed the, the homeless. I see it here in the books. And God's going to try that. Was that a sincere, he's going to weigh your motives. Was that sincere? 
then he'll count that as gold, silver, and precious stones. That'll be a treasure. But if you did it because you wanted the press uh, to take a picture of you, if it was a, a, a photo op, you wanted, amen, your name to shine in the newspaper the next day, then God considers that wood, hay, and stubble. You don't get a reward for that. That's wood, hay, and stubble is going in the fire. You won't be burned because at the judgment seat, it's not about punishment. It's about issuing a reward. Are you going to get a reward for that? Or are you going to not get a reward for that? Was that trash or was it a treasure? Tra are you understanding that, Sister Rini? Good, I want you to get it. So when we go to before God, after we're resurrected and the believers go to the judgment seat, it's so your works can be tried, not for punishment. Don't get it twisted. This is not about punishment. We go here, it's called the judgment seat. In the Greek, it's called the bima. It's, it has the same concept of the Olympics going before the judge to receive first place, second place rewards. It has that kind of a concept. You're not gonna get in trouble here. Your, your doings, your work will be tried. Rather it's trash or treasure. And if God finds it to be trash, it goes into the fire. You don't get a reward for that. Am I making sense y'all? Yes. Amen. Okay, okay. All right, I hope y'all getting this. And that's why Paul said, let every man, let me move this out of the way. Back there in verse number 10, he said, but let every, let every man take heed how he buildeth. That means, Lord, let my motives be pure. Don't let me be doing it because I wanted to, to make a name for myself. Let me be doing it because I want to make a name for you. I want to declare your name in the earth, not my name. So everything we do shall be tried by fire to see if it's going to last, to see if we get reward for it, or to see if God just throws that over in the, in the pile, amen, to be burned. Am I making sense? Yes. On Facebook, am I making sense? Are y'all getting it? All right, now uh, give me another reader and see why I'm taking this real slow. Give me another reader for 12 and 13. I'm doing some backtrack tracking and I'm coming forward. Because listen, y'all, here's the deal. That's why we, we, we want to work. We don't work for salvation. We work because we're saved. We work because we love God. We work because we're vessels to be used by God. We work and the main thing is soul winning. That's what this is all about. It's about winning souls, populating the kingdom of heaven. So next reader, give me 12 and 13. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble. Uh, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Pause and for a minute. Pause for a minute. The eyes of Jesus, remember we're at the Bema seat, y'all. And this is where Jesus is going to judge. A revelation talks about his eyes being like fire. Did you hear what I said? And so I just see the, the eyes of Jesus like fire can, can tell what kind of work your work was. Isn't that something? I, I didn't even get that scripture. God just dropped that revelation on me. His eyes are like fire. And so uh, 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 Minister Jill just read, every man's work shall be made manifest. 
for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. God is an all consuming fire. You're not going to be burned up. Please understand we're saved and spared from damnation. This is not a time of uh, punishment at all. It's about reward. Are you going to get one or not? Is it trash or is it treasure? Trash don't last. Trash is fit for the fire. Trash needs to be burned. Go back, Minister Jill, and start again, verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall shall try every man's work of what force it is of what sort it is now isn't it y'all this it it is is coming it's all coming together god's gonna try jesus gonna try your it, your work is gonna be manifest and the fire fire causes things to shine and be revealed y'all diamonds have to go through a lot of heat uh, high, high heat to be revealed. And so um, every man's work is going to be tried by fire to see what sort it is. Is it gold? It's, is it silver? Is it precious stone? Or is it wood? Is it, what is it? I, I can't see this is in the way. Is it wood? Is it hay? Or is it stubble? Now I want I want to uh ask you guys um tell me the, the the types of materials that you can build with. I just I know you see it. Everybody sees it, but I want to hear it. God gave you what to build with. Gold, silver, silver. precious stones. Hay. Okay. I mean, not hay, I'm sorry. I think it's in there. Oh. Uh-huh. Come on. A and stubble. All right. And this helps me to, to know that you all are getting it. Why would you not want to build in your own words if I said, hey, Rini, <laughs> I got some wood out here, some extra wood and some hay and some stubble. Uh why don't you use that to build on your foundation? No. What would be your <laughs> gold, silver, precious stones? Okay. Why would you want to build? And I'm talking to everybody. Why would you want to build with gold, silver, and precious stones? In your own words. Because it's tough, it's strong, and it lasts. Okay. All right. And why would you not want, I just want to hear y'all. Why, why would you not want to build? And even I'm looking on Facebook too. Why would you not want to build with wood, hay, and stubble? Because the wind can blow that stuff away. Ooh, that's very good. Because if you do a study on uh, how they used to sift wheat in the Bible, they would, uh, it's called the chaff. They would shake it up, and here it is again, and the wind would blow the chaff away because it wasn't no good. And whatever remained, that kosha, that's what was good. So when you go through the storm, I hear the book of Revelation say, strengthen that which remains. Storms cause the chafe, the wood, the hay, and the stubble to blow off. Amen. Are y'all with me tonight? Woo! So you're not gonna get a re no reward for burning. I mean, for for working with uh, using wood, hay, and stubble. Now I'm gonna ask a difficult question, a kind of difficult in that I don't know how to ask it. What does the wood, hay, and stubble signify? in terms of how we work 
Sometimes I, 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 come on, talk to me. Sometimes, I, uh, are you a lazy worker? You try and get something done real quick just to get it done and say you done got it quick and go collect your $7 and go on home? Excellent, Minister Jill, excellent. We, and then at that event that you did all sloppy, you didn't give God your best, you was lazy, and then you're going to get up to the judgment seat and say, remember how I did that play? And he going to say, uh-uh, I looked at that. It's been tried by fire. You did it sloppy. You did it hastily. You didn't give your best. Put that over there with the wood, hay, and stubble. That that event was uh, um, uh, fit for the fire. Fit for the fire. That's trash. <laughs> Y'all got it? Yeah. Come on here, Elder Melvina. And also, uh, to me, the wood, hay, and stubble represents poor workmanship. Excellent. Excellent, y'all. Anybody else got anything? Flip flip the coin, the gold, the silver, and the precious stones. You did it with the right motive. You did it with a spirit of excellence. Everlasting. Come on. With God, motive is everything. Over there in the book of Samuel it said, man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. He's going to always go deeper than the surface. Your work is going to be tried by the, the fire of, of God's eyes. It's going to be revealed by fire to see what sort it is. And what that means, was it lasting? Or let's put it in 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 our uh our title tonight. What sort it is? Was it trash or was it treasure? Woo! God, treasure. Huh? What you say? God, treasure. Right, with the right motive, giving God your best. We need to understand that everything we do, we need to try to give God our best. Sometimes we sit around and say, because we don't like somebody in the church. I don't like the way they preach, so I'm going to sit here and tune out. The devil is a whole lie. You sitting in the presence of God. God uses people. And you're going to withhold your praise because you don't like somebody. They made me feel some kind of way. That's trash. Come on, Minister Jill. Um, just a quick comment, Pastor. Uh, uh, to me, it, re it, it reminds me of this movie I saw longer, a few years ago, called The Rapture. Well, somewhere in the movie, God comes back and he raptures the people that he won't own up. The other ones are left in the church. They may. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I have built the church. Uh, my daddy name on there. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I bought the uh, rose for the choir. I gave up two, three, four hundred dollars. What about that? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm the first lady of the church. You took my husband. Well, what about me? You know, the ones who left, they didn't do nothing good. The ones that, that did what they did for God, for the kingdom building, them the ones he wanted. He want to. So where you got diamonds on your hand? They gonna have diamonds and stuff on their crown up in heaven. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Gio. Good point. Now, I just want to bring our minds in. We are uh, talking tonight about rewards that go hand in hand with crowns. And we seem to be focusing in, if I were to pick a crown tonight, it would be the crown of rejoicing, which has everything to do with soul winning. The souls are the jewels in the crown. Yay, glory to God. Yee! I feel God, y'all. Oh my God. So let me read verse 13 again. Every man's work shall be made manifest. 
for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is and here are the qualifying sorts right here is it wood hay or stubble or is it gold, silver, and precious stones? All right. Give me uh, my final reader here for verses, Sister Rini, verses 14 and 15. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. 15. All right. Let's just stop right there. Thank you for the pause. And I I'll come in since you said that. If it, I want to say this, if it lasts, it was good. Come on. If it lasts, it's a treasure. After it goes through the fire and it's tried and manifested and revealed, if any man's work abide, abide means to last. If it's still there, then you're going to get a, re a reward for that. If it lasts, you built with gold, silver, and precious stones. If any man's work abide, or if your work after, after the fire eyes of God pierces it, reveals what sort it is, if it lasts, if it didn't get put over in the trash, it's a treasure. Eee! If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, you're going to get a reward for it. Your heart was right. You did it with, look, look, a spirit of excellence doesn't mean that you have all the means. It means that you work with what you have. You do the best with what you have. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God, all I got is this, but I'm going to do the best with this. Thank you bless me with this. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm giving you my best down here. So that's the mindset we should have while working for God. We're not, listen, salvation is not works based. Salvation is the free gift of God. Now we work because we're saved and we work, amen, to please God. And in so, in so pleasing God, we're getting rewards for that. And I'm gonna give an explanation that is much better than my own, a written explanation. So if any man's, back in verse 14, if any man's work abide, if it lasts, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Sister Rini, give me verse number 14 and 15 again. 14 again. Okay. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Come on. 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Okay, so this goes back to the explanation. Here's how these events work. The church is raptured out of here. We believers go before the judgment seat of Christ to receive rewards for our actions uh, uh, to be tried by fire, to see if we're going to get rewards, to see what kind, what sort our actions were, the things that we did, all about motive. If it lasts, we receive a reward. If it doesn't, he's not going to punish us because we're saved. That's how we got there in the first place. We in heaven now, standing before the judgment seat of Christ which is also called the Bema. Again, it's just like the Olympics. And he's saying, well, Sister Rini, I saw this. You did this on, on such and such a day. I saw how you took care of your father. I saw how you took care of your mother. I saw it. I, I wrote these things down. 
Okay. They in the book of remembrance. I think Elder Shirley talked about that uh, a couple weeks ago. I saw that. And you built on a good foundation that was gold, that was silver, and that was precious. It's a treasure. It's going to last. And you're going to get a reward for it. I have not forgot your labor of love. Yes. Some things, y'all, we, we done, we done forgot all about it. But God never forgets. So he's saying, and I believe each one of us, because none of us are perfect. I believe, let me use me. When I get before the judgment seat of Christ, God going to say some of the things I did, put that over there in the pile that's ready for it. Uh, trash burnt to be burned up. The, those uh, uh, substances catch on fire, stubble, hay, and wood. That's for fire. I know some of the things I done done in my sick. I'll be sixty four August the sixteenth. I ain't always. I missed the mark yesterday. Listen, let me let me confess here. I was so mad at AT and T yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Some I'm telling you, they got on my last nerve. My internet went down. They had to. Uh, uh, I, I'm gonna really confess, y'all. They they had to send a technician out. I know it wasn't a technician's fault, and it was a female technician. It's all right. She knew what she was, you know, doing. She was doing her very best. She came in through my back patio with all these coils of a wire. Knocked my patio door off track. <laughs> and uh, listen, I'm going to confess real good. I'm going to confess real good. Going to hope it'll help somebody. I didn't realize until after she left that she had knocked the track off. And in my mind, you know what I said? That bee knocked the track off my... I said it in my mind. <laughs> I said it in my mind. So listen, I know when I get to heaven, I'm going to have some rewards. And I confess it. It was in my mind. It, it, it could have almost come out of my mouth. As a man thinketh in his heart, I thought it. That bee knocked the track off my door or off the my door off the track. <laughs> and hopefully my confession will help somebody i'm a pastor but i'm i'm human i missed the mark baby and so i know when i stand before the judgment seat of christ there's gonna be some stuff that i did that go in the pile of trash y'all pray for y'all pastor and then i got tickled i'm Amen. like where did that come from Something just popped up on my screen. So anyway, I hope that helps somebody. And I hope, amen, that I built when I get to heaven. It calls Sha. Amen. That I got more in the treasure pile. Hey, glory to God. Are y'all here tonight? More in the treasure pile than I do in the trash pile. Amen. Uh, Elder Daphne, I wish I could see you. She's a witness that I've been teaching this lesson for almost 20 years. Amen. And um, I, I went back and I when, when Elder Shirley uh, told me, you know, that she wouldn't be able to teach tonight, I had to go back on my computer and I had taught the lesson on crowns and rewards back in 2014. And so I had to pull some of that up. But Elder uh, Daphne knows that this particular text, I've been teaching this for so many years. And it's so helpful for us uh, to know how, you know, how to build, why to build, you know. And here's what the old saints used to say, and it rings true. Only what you do for Christ will last. See, only what you do for Christ is gold, silver, and precious. Only what we do for Christ 
will last. Don't think less of me because I, I confessed out loud. The Bible said, confess your faults Amen. one to another. <laughs> Amen. I confessed him. He said, then he is faithful and just to cleanse us, to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. And guess who gets a black eye for that? Because what you conceal, amen, you can't get healed. I, I be a poet all the time, y'all. Yes. <laughs> what you conceal, don't get healed. Amen. You got to confess it. Ain't that right, y'all? And so I put it out there. Amen. For the whole world to hear what was in my mind. And I, ooh, and when I, it's like this with me. If I, if I make a decision to be ugly, it'd be really ugly. <laughs> Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I know that was wood and hay. Woo! God said, that is fit for fire, honey. That's ugly. <laughs> All right. So let me give you, let's take a, no, let me go a little further before I let y'all come in. Uh, write these scriptures down. It's three of them. Uh, Sha. Let's see. Write down Revelation 22 and 12. We've seen it before, but write it down. Give me a scribe on Facebook, Revelation 22 and 12. And we're going to all get these relatively fast. Matthew chapter 5, 11 and 12. Excuse me. Matthew 25, 20 and 21. Luke 6. 33 through 35. And here I go. I'm going to repeat them. I'm focusing on rewards. They go hand in hand with crowns. There are rewards and crowns. Revelation 22 and 12. Matthew 5, 11 and 12. Matthew 25, 20 and 21. Luke 6, 33 through 35. And um, let me see. I want to say something. Let's see. What do I want to say? Do I want to go here? Let's do this part first. Let me see. Is there anything really significant here that I want to say? I'm looking through my notes because I don't want to... Uh, cover something that I think Elder Shirley might hit on. But like I said, if it were a crown tonight, I would be focusing on the crown of rejoicing. Amen. And I'll let her do, I'll give you a little bit on it because when we read from uh, 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 our foundational scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, that was Paul is saying, you know, through his witnessing, the church of Corinth is the jewel in his crown. So the crown of uh, rejoicing, and I'm just, just listen to this. Don't, don't try to write it all down. Write what you can, whatever, um, you know, hits your spirit, write it. Uh, the crown of rejoicing, sometimes it's also called the crown of exaltation, but I want to focus on crown of rejoicing and this crown is a reward. This crown is a reward given for witnessing. Watch this, y'all. Now, this is good right here. This crown is a reward that's given for witnessing. Watch this. Follow up and ministry to others. See, I, I want to shout right there. I, I might get this crown right here. Because I'm the drive-by pastor. I follows up. You will get a crown for follow-up. Listen at this. The crown of rejoicing. This crown is a reward given for witnessing. Follow up. And ministry to others. That's good right there. Amen. 
Woo, my God. So don't just witness. Amen. You know, that's where the church sometimes loses it on the follow up. No follow up. I try to follow up. Y'all know I get on y'all nerves sometimes. I'm I'm really gonna follow up. Hey. <laughs> So I want to say that again, this crown of rejoicing, I call it the soul winner's crown, crown of rejoicing. This crown is a reward given for witnessing, follow up and ministry to others with a right motive. Not cause I want to be, oh, I can't talk right now. Um, not because I want to be seen, not because I'm running for a political office, not because I want a photo op, but for the right motive. This crown is a re reward given for witnessing, follow up and ministry to others. Now, I want to quantify what I just said. I want to qu quantify this statement. Don't be ashamed to put what you do on camera. Follow me closely because the scripture says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Amen. So don't let people tell you, try to make you shame for putting what you do on Facebook, how they gonna see it if you don't shine it. Let your light so shine before men. Let your heart be right. Your motive be right. And yeah, blast it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. This little light of mine, big light, big light big light go ahead i'm gonna let it shine oh yes i sure am i'm gonna take my phone i'm gonna broadcast it around the world that men may see my good works and glorify my father who is in heaven my god y'all well let's get these scriptures it's 8.33. And, uh, okay, here's how I want to, I want to know who's using an, uh, their own Bible and who relies on the screen? Who uses their own Bible? Raise your I hand. In my Bible. Okay, y'all got your Bible? Okay, good. If everybody's got their Bible, I want Elder Daphne to get for me Revelation 22 and 12. And if anything looks good before it and above it, throw it in. But the key is Revelation 22 and 12. Um, I want Elder Melvina to get Matthew chapter 5, 11 and 12. And my people on Facebook, they need to see it too. Elder Melvina, uh, Matthew chapter 5, 11 and 12. We're still dealing with rewards. Uh, Minister Jill, you got Matthew 25, verses 20 and 21. And, uh, Sister Rini, have I assigned you one? No. You got Luke chapter 6, verse 33 and 35. So hold on, because I got to get all these here for my people on Facebook. And I, I got a, a type of couple things. Let's see. And let's see. I got to put it in like this and then fix it. Hold on. Bear with me. Uh, what are y'all looking at? Let me stop share for a minute. Okay. While I fix this up. Tell you what, tell you what I'm going to put up here while while I, I fix these scriptures up. Y'all bear with me, okay? I'm going to put this back up here, let y'all be thinking about it. Is it trash or treasure? 
Let me get another screen here. Give me a minute. This is for my class on uh ooh, on Facebook because they need to see it too. Y'all, this is difficult. What am I doing? Give me just a second. Give me another second, please. <laughs> Y'all laughing at me. Let's see. Let's see, you got that one. I got all kind of spaces in here that I'm trying to get out of here. Give me another second. Give me another second, please. Somebody say trash or treasure. It makes sense now, don't it? It makes sense. Okay, almost. Let me see. Give me another second. Hey, Facebook, let me know you're there. Hey, I see my nephew out there. Hot wings. Hey, Jamie. Hey, Erica. Erica, God's child. God bless you. Amen. Okay. All right. Who's got my, my, oops, I left one off, y'all. It looks like it didn't catch this one. Okay, wait a minute. I got to do this again because that was a mistake. Okay. Now, if my Facebook people can see it, my first reader is Revelation 22, and the key is verse number 12. If you see anything, we're talking about rewards now. Go ahead, Elder Daphne. Okay. Can y'all hear that music? They are band no. or something. Oh, okay. Across the street. Uh -uh. You sound good. Okay. Matthew, I mean, uh, Revelation 22 and 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. This is Jesus. We don't know Amen. when he's coming. He's coming quickly. Everybody's going to get a reward. Now, if I was I, uh, teaching, uh, I, I said earlier, the believers go before the judgment seat not to be punished but to receive rewards. Sinners gonna get rewards too. You gonna get, cause payday is coming. Amen. Come on. Amen. And the wages of sin is death. So sinners stand before what is called the great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment. Everybody's going, everybody's earning reward. So don't get these two seats mixed up. If you, if you get resurrected and you show up at the, hello, I'm at the great white throne judgment. You in trouble, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you Gary, you Gary be fried, <laughs> but we stand before the judgment seat, not for punishment, but for reward. And so, so everybody's going to get a reward. You're going to get payback. Payday is coming. And all your, uh, if you don't repent, listen, this is, see, here's, here's why it's important to repent. Oh, y'all ain't even looking at the scripture. Y'all still looking at something else. This is why. I got to say this, help me, Holy Ghost. Y'all looking at the wrong thing. I got y'all looking at the wrong thing. Wait a minute. Don't let me lose my thought. Can y'all see the scripture now? Amen. Yes. Here's why it's important to receive Christ as payment for sin. He is payment. He paid for our sins. If you don't receive Christ, as payment for your sins, then you have to pay for your sins. Come on. Woo! That's it. That's it. Right. He paid for our sins. Accept him today as payment for your sins. If you don't, you will pay for your sins. 
So Jesus said, behold, come on, I'm coming quickly. You don't know when I'm coming and my reward is in my hand. It's with me to give every man according as your work shall be. Did you work with gold? Uh, did you work with a uh, precious stone? What's that other one, y'all? Gold, nope. what? Silver? Nope. Then you're going to get a reward for that. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. My next reader, has who has Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. See the reward in here. You see the reward in Revelation 12? Yes. We're not only working for crowns, we're working for crowns and rewards. This re crown of rejoicing deals with soul winners. Every soul is a jewel to God. He said, all souls are mine. Every one of us are precious jewels to him. And every soul, we don't know, y'all, we won't know every soul that we won. Remember, we started off with one plants, another waters, but God gives the increase. But when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, I believe tears are going to be flowing from our eyes. We're going to, we, he's going to say, you won this one and that one won that one. And because of the seed you planted, eh, korabasaya. Hallelujah. Amen. That uh, the, the offspring of that one seed. Are y'all hearing me today? Amen. We're going to receive rewards and jewels for things we didn't even know. Yeah. Somebody was watching you. Thank you, God. And you impacted their life. Thank you, they God. may have never even walked up to you. They may have worked in the cubicle next to you. Thank you, God. Isha. And God remembers. Hey, glory to God. I just believe that. I, I can see, because I, I, right now the tears want to flow. With me thinking how God is saying to you, you did so good with your mother, Sister Rena. You did so good with your father. You are a, a loving caregiver. Elder Melvina, you are a loving caregiver to your husband. Amen. You. Glory to God. The, the good things that we do. Thank you. There's God. a reward coming for that, y'all. But the, the but the thing of it is, amen. We're gonna get some surprises. Amen. Surprises are things you didn't even know. Come on, y'all. I'm gonna cry for the surprises. Hey, I'm surprised. I didn't know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The surprises, y'all. The surprises. I'm gonna be surprised that I had made an impact. I had no idea. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm adding in surprises. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Ooh, I can't hardly move forward. Give me my next reader. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. You're going to get a reward for punking out. I'm just going to say it like that. Let them talk Thank about you. you. Come on. This is, if I, I said, if I dealt with a crown tonight, it would be the crown of rejoicing. You're going to get a crown for punking out. They talk about what they say, the song, talk about me as much as you please. The more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. I'm not going to retaliate. I'm not going to let you take my crown for talking about me, for persecuting me. I'm going to get a crown because I let you walk on me. Oh, my God. Rejoice. Look, go back. There's a reward for Amen for shut mouth grace. There's a reward for restraining yourself. 
and not blacking their eye. I even get a second chance for the thought I had about my screen. I got a do-over. Every day I wake up, we get a do-over. Brand new mercies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You get another shot at the crown, the same crown. Here, you're going to receive a reward for allowing persecution. There's a reward for persecution. You acted in, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the, what is it that is strength under control? Meekness. 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 Yeah. Meekness. It's not that I can't, baby. Hallelujah. I often Amen. say, I, come on. I, I, I ain't forgot how to fight. And I found out the other day I ain't forgot how to cuss either. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. But help me, Holy Ghost. I, it ain't cute. It's just my confession. It's just my confession. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. They lied on you, scandalize your name for your sake. That's why they don't like you, Elder Melvina. They don't like the anointing on your life. There's, they're coming against you because of the oil that's on your life. And so you're being oh accused falsely for the sake of Jesus. And if you restrain, practice shut mouth grace, rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You ain't the only one. Yee! Come on, get a crown for that one. I'm just going to say, this is a crown for shut mouth grace. I could have, but I didn't. I got the strength to do it, but I exercise meekness, strength, Amen. under control. Come on, y'all. Oh, my God. Let, let's hurry on up. Who's my next one? This is Minister Jill. Matthew 25. Verse 20 and 21. Uh, just let me preface this a little bit. This is the where, where the uh, uh, the people receive the talents. One had one talent, another had five. That's what this is. So give me just 20 and 21. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so he that had received five talents came and brought and brought other five talents saying lord thou delivered unto me five talents behold i have gained beside them five talents more can i expand your thinking on this because we're talking about soul winning and populating the kingdom of god the more souls we win the more heaven is filled up you know they say hell is enlarging itself but there's room at the cross and so i see this as adding the five you gave me i added come on I added. That's what we should be doing, multiplying and adding. We shouldn't be subtracting from the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Over here, we deal with multiplication and addition, not subtraction. It's about adding. Unmute your mic and say, it's about adding. It's about adding. God gave us what to work with, right? Yes. Amen. He gave us here. Work with this. Now add. Mm -hmm. Multiply. That's the command to Adam and Eve. Be yes, fruitful yes. and multiply. Replenish the earth. God is saying to us, replenish heaven. Multiply. Add to what? 
So he's saying of the five talents, I have gained beside them five talents more. Read verse 21. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make it the rule over over many things. Enter thou into into sorry. Enter okay. thou into the joy of thy Lord. All right, very good. Thank you, Minister Jill. Amen. So this is heaven, y'all. What you do on earth determines what you're going to be doing in heaven. We're talking about rewards. We're talking about how we are building, how we earn, uh, uh, how we earn these rewards. We don't work for salvation, but because we are saved, we work for the kingdom. I'm employed by the kingdom of God. My job description is to add and multiply. And he's saying, you did good. Well done. Here we are now. We've been raptured. We are standing before the, the judgment seat of Christ to receive rewards. Well done. You added, you multiplied, you were faithful over a few up here in heaven. I'm going to make you ruler. That's a reward. You're going to be ruler over much in heaven. This is Jesus saying, come on, enter in. We're in heaven now. And you are going to be ruler over much up here in heaven because god's saying i could trust you i could trust you down on earth you did good your motives were good here is your reward come on up higher to heaven and you're going to be ruler over much Ooh, that, that's reward y'all that's Amen. reward this is a parable. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I, I want to cry. I just feel like so much of this is directed to Sister Rini. And I feel the prophetic on me that even Sister Rini, you needed to hear a word from God. And God just is telling me to tell you, well done. And again, I said it earlier, amen, prophetically, I declare, amen, that you have been faithful. You didn't walk out on those that were sick. You served well as a caregiver, and God is saying, well done. You did well right here on earth. Hallelujah. There's a reward for that. Amen, amen. There's a reward for that. You were faithful over the few things here on earth. Now enter into the joy of the Lord. That's heaven, honey. You're going to be ruler over many things. A lot of responsibilities. Listen, heaven is, is an economy. We're not just going to be flapping wings. Ooh, hello. <laughs> Flying. Ooh. Singing all day, flapping our wings. <laughs> we got things to do in heaven. Amen. Y'all, heaven is a beautiful place, but it's an economy. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Ooh, hello, Jill. Hi, Daphne. Bye. See I'm getting to the end, y'all. Y'all know how. See you later. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> we have to get some joy out of this now. Y'all know y'all's y'all's pastor is a comedian. I'm comic. All right. So who's, this is our last one, Sister Rini. Please let me go back and say, heaven is a beautiful place. Amen. We got things to do. We're going to have assignments. Some are going to be rulers over much. Uh, some of us are going to be earning crowns and rewards. And the jewels that go in the crowns are likened to the souls of men. 
We got two things we're working for, crowns and rewards. All right. And our last reader has uh, Luke 6, 33 through 35. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. You, you, look, you're not getting a reward for what you should do. Daphne, help me out right here, Elder Daphne. Amen. <laughs> help me out. How, say that like a, we always say it. How, uh, you don't get you don't get reward for doing your job. I think that's come how. on, yeah, right? Doing what you're supposed right. to do. Absolutely. And so it's an easy thing to do good to them who do good to you. What thank have ye? What reward is that? Sinners do that too. Everybody, it's easy to be good to somebody that ain't no challenge in that. Being good to people who are good to you, that's easy. But what does verse 34 say? And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? Or sinners there, also this is motive. Look, I'm going to give you something because I want something. That's what it's saying. If you lend to them of whom you hope to receive. Some people are playing a little something because they want a lot of something. All right. Y'all better hear me tonight. Amen. They'll lure you in. I, I, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a give you a little something. But what I really want, I want to extract from your life a whole lot of stuff. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna get that door open with a little something, but I'm gonna wreak havoc in your life. I'm gonna give you a little something, but I'm gonna take everything you got. Mm. Y'all better hear me tonight. Jesus. If ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, read reader. What thank have ye for sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again? Y'all, this this thing is going on in the world with these false prophets and false teachers. They give you a little something because they want a whole lot. They want a whole lot from you. I'm going to give you a teaser. I'm going to give you what your ears want to hear. So many people are going to be lost. We Look, it's the truth that makes us free, y'all. We got to study the word like this. We have to. We can't we can't just live off of shouting and dancing and, and hearing words that tickles our ears. We got to take the full counsel of God. Amen. And you know, a whole lot of people are following behind with itching ears and they and they're gonna miss it. Let me stay on task. Uh go back to 34. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, and thank have ye for sinners. What thank have ye? It says, What thank have ye? What thank have ye? Uh huh. Also lend to sinners to receive as much again. Come on. It's a catch 22. There's a, what they call it, there's some strings attached. Go ahead, verse number 35. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, Ooh. and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Oh, y'all. So here's Amen. how we earn rewards. If you want to get a reward, love your enemies. That's love hard. Uh -huh. yes. And do good and lend without a, an ulterior motive. That's good. That's good. Hoping for nothing again. Yeah. And, and then you're going to get a reward for that. As I close and before I give it to you guys, what's the name of our lesson tonight? Trash or treasure. treasure. All right. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, if I, if I, if I were doing a crown again, that would be the crown of rejoicing. I'm going to put this back in your hearing. This crown is a reward given for witnessing, for follow-up and ministry to others. In one sense, 
and we didn't read this, the Thessalonians will be Paul's crown. But we did allude to that uh, with the church of Corinth and Corinthians. He won those churches. He went in there, plowed that ground, and won these churches and got these uh, people saved. So yeah. they are his jewels. They are his crown. You know, you can look at somebody like, let me use me. Brenda Walden, uh, evangelist Brenda Walden. Some called her mother Brenda Walden. I can't talk to y'all right now. I have to call you back, Courtney. I'm concluding Bible study. Uh, I can't. I'm in the middle of teaching. Okay. <laughs> Your kids will just call you and call you and call you and call you. So anyway, back to evangel evangelist Brenda Walden. Some call her mother Walden. I am a crown to her. She could look at me and say, I, I am her crown. I am also her jewel in the crown. It's because of her that I'm saved. Amen. It is me. And so every church, Amen. Paul could, Paul could say, you are my witness. You are my crown. I'm looking at my crown. And so let me say this again, because I don't want to go too deep because we're coming, trying to conclude. It says, in one sense, the Thessalonians will be Paul's crown and the effect at the Bema or the judgment seat and throughout eternity will be rejoicing and exaltation over their presence in heaven. What does that mean, y'all? The Amen. surprises we're going to get in heaven. The surprises. I'm saying throw in the Cracker Jack box that got the surprise in the box. The rewards, the crowns, and the surprises. The people you may see in heaven that say thank you yeah. because of your life, because you witnessed to me, I'm here. What a surprise. Amen. Oh my God, y'all. I got to end. Let me say, let me say, let me say this. Uh, do I want to read this? Do I want to read this? Do I want to read this? I don't think I do. I could, but I think I'm a digress because Elder Shirley, when she comes back and I pray that she'll be back to conclude this lesson on the crowns. I took us in the direction of the rewards that go along with the crowns. So, at uh let's see let's see at this time let's go ahead and give god a hand of praise and i'm gonna stop sharing oh right hi yay glory to god thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah my god y'all this ought to inspire us it really ought to inspire us to to give God our best with what we have, our best of everything, our best praise. You know, even when, you know, that attitude coming into church, I, I feel some kind, we don't have a right to do that. Amen. We should just give him our best, our best with a pure heart. All right, I'm going to digress, which means I'm just going to kind of calm down and step back. And uh, guys, y'all take it away. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm taking away Paul planted the seed of, of the good news in people's heart. He brought the message of salvation. Apollo watered the seed. He helped the believers grow stronger in faith. Uh, every man shall receive his own reward. We are laborers together with God. Be mindful what you are building on your foundation. Do not put no junk in it. Woo! Tell the truth in love. Jesus Christ is the foundation. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. He's the... Our, uh, Jesus will give us the tools to work with, which is gold, silver, and precious stones. 
of Jesus Christ. Or what else? Or what else? Add to that. Or uh, wood, hay, and stubble. Uh huh. Lazy work. Uh -huh. And uh, whatever we do for Christ will last. These are rewards for building believers go before the judgment seat for their rewards. Doing works will be tried. Let your motives be pure. Uh, work because we love God, soul winning, and for soul winning for God. And fire of God's eyes, give God our best, everlasting crown of rejoicing. If it lasts, it's a treasure. Uh, something else you say. Oh, reward. With witnessing, follow up, ministering to others, meekness under control. That's it. Wow. I want to show y'all one thing I said, and I want y'all to see this real quick because I always like to make sure it's scripturally sound. We talked about God's eyes being that fire. Revelation 19 and 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire. Watch this, look. And that's another crown we don't talk about, the crown of thorns that Jesus, he started it. That's a whole nother thing right there. Uh, so his eyes were as, he's described here with eyes as flame of fire. So, you know, that's all he got to do is look at your works. Y'all feel me? That's the scripture. And then look at there, on his, on his head were many crowns, but here's the focus. His eyes were as flame of fire. Okay. I'm done. That was excellent. My takeaways, planting and water is necessary. We're in partnership with God. Christ is our payment for our sins. The harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. That's the word I was looking for, harvest. Okay. And I was trying to think of it as you were saying. I, was like, I know it, then it came to me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jesus is my foundation. Trash won't last. God is going to weigh our motives. A choice has been around since Genesis. With trash, it's easy to come by. With treasure, you have to put in work. Fire reveals what's in you. With God, Woo! motive is everything. He who wins souls is wise. Salvation, a free gift of God. Do it with a genuine heart, not an intentional heart. Let your treasure overflow more than your trash. Beam of the judgment seat where you get, uh, I mean, where you get rewards, and the great white throne is another judgment seat. Um, for sinners. For, for sinners. Uh huh. And crown of rejoicing is for witnessing, follow up ministry to others with right motives. Those are my takeaways. Wow. Wow, y'all. Ooh, <laughs> my God. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm full. <laughs> Come on, Minister Jill. I don't know if I can eat anymore. <laughs> this is just a little bit of dessert. Just a little. Uh, okay. I needed this tonight. I, I, I needed this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for giving it to Pastor. Thank you. Thank you that she delivered it a full plate to us i tell you i ain't even gonna remember everything that i want but i got to say and this is gonna be my mob show what you thought was trash the jesus made it i made made me out of gold silver precious jewels and and, and I mean, I'm, you may think I'm trash, but the Lord says 
I'm good. It, it, there was an old saying that says, uh, one man's, one trash. man's trash is another yeah. man's treasure. Yeah. And I'm glad I'm, I'm, I'm a working treasure for the Lord. I am so glad, I, you know, all, all my torment down here will not be in vain. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, God is just good job. This is, you know, you don't know what a person goes to through until you hear something that brighten makes you forget about your pain, your misery, and you like, hey, and that that's what I've been sitting here doing. You know, I started to click off and go somewhere and cry, but love was like, wait a minute, you gonna miss it? You gonna miss it? Don't miss it. And when you told me the title, I was like, all right now. Where my <laughs> other laptop at? But I, it's so much I, I just love. So much. I, I, I can't name it all, but it's so much. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, new bitch. I love you all. I love you too. And that was good. Now, I want to say in the context that Minister Jill used trash and treasure, he did in that context, he took trash and turned it into a treasure. But when you get up there, that's a whole nother concept and context. Trash remains trash and treasures remains treasure. Up there, he's not going to take trash and turn it into a treasure. Down here, he takes trash. Hey, yeah. the trash man yeah. is on route. Hey, I love it, Jill. I yeah. love it. He takes I, trash down here and yeah. turns it, recycles it. Yeah. Come on, renews it. Hey, glory. Oh, yeah. And turns it into treasure. Thank the you, stuff you. that people threw away. Pastor Graves used to say, God looks through dumpsters and trash cans yes. looking for people he can turn into treasures. Appreciate My that. God. <laughs> He did. Say he did. That. My God, my God, my God. This is so good, y'all. Uh, I'm going to ask Sister Kimberly. I know she don't want to talk. I uh, didn't want to talk, but I, I don't want to overlook. I want to acknowledge that she's here. And if she wants to say anything, she can. This is an awesome lesson. And it ought to reach us, people like me, people like Sister Kimberly, that was a uh, fit for fit for the trash trash pickup amen sitting out on the curb that was me hey ready for the trash man oh my god all right elder daphne and i'm gonna put this up so we can just be looking at it as we uh uh conclude amen uh good lesson i just want to uh uh tell a story or add a comment uh do you remember when pastor gray preached his last sermon and the young man you you and pastor graves had no idea who he was or at that oh. time i guess and he, he was in a wheelchair at at a church were we in devington i yeah pastor webster church yep we were in devington and this young man was uh one of the musicians and he uh told talked about pastor kim and, and pastor graves coming to jail to visit him and you know going to jail to minister and he was in the crowd and he thanked them and thanked them for you know helping him to know jesus and get saved and stay saved but you know that was his uh some of his labor he seen before he before god took him home because he passed away like a few days later yes then, you know that's i'm i'm saying that because you said that when we get in heaven you know we're gonna be surprised but god allowed him to see that while he was still here you know the fruits of his labor the fruit so, yes mm -hmm. my god so I just thought you bring about it that when you were tears to my that. eyes i Go know, ahead. I know. If I can find the video, I'm gonna share it with you with y'all Sunday, those that weren't there to see it, but yes. My Amen. God. That Great was a lesson. beautiful thing. Great lesson. Praise God. Always. Amen. Praise God. Uh 
are all hearts and minds clear we we uh let's see what time it is i think we're doing good oh we at 9 15 we ain't doing good uh <laughs> anybody got anything else i don't want to you know go off and uh wow there's a lot of people out here let's see crisis in my crisis and i don't see any more comments let me shut down and open again and see if there's some new stuff let's see let me open again sometimes that all right praise god sister cassandra trash or treasure all right we're gonna ask minister jill if nobody else has anything to say um, we're going to ask Minister Jill to give us our closing prayer. Please lift up Elder Shirley. Um, uh, also, uh, lift up um, Brother Eddie. He should have come home today. And, uh, all, you know, however the Lord leads you to pray. Minister Jill. Thank you. My Heavenly Father, my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord, for not for everything, Jesus, for making sure I did not go into that pit of uh, of depression today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What man can't do and don't know and and is done found it. I know when you say it will stop. When you put down your foot and decide, you already know when you're going to heal me and it's going to shock them all. I'm going to be standing there shouting. I'm already shouting. I'm shouting for the other ones that are in hospital, that their body is racked with pain and the doctors done turn their back on them. Their families don't come and see them no more. Touch them, Lord, right yes, now. Sir. Go into that nursing home right now people don't come and visit but lord stop by there even if you don't stay long stop by and let them know that you were there i want to thank you lord in advance for them i want to thank you lord for the people like sister Rini that cares that loves that give them a look one of those smiley looks when she come into church to let you know hey girl it's all right Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for Elder Melvina and her prayers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for minute Elder Shirley Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for leading me to, to some a place where I feel at home, where it's family. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for all the ones that's been sitting back and watching us and we don't know, but they are gonna be delivered. Thank you, thank you. Maybe somebody said something to plant that seed and somebody else is gonna come along and water it. And you, you are gonna help it grow. Thank you, Lord. Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't care how much this stuff multiplies. The doctor said it's multiplying. I said it's just giving praise to you, Lord. Because when you want to take it out, it's going to come out. And it's going to be a testimony to you. I know I'm still your child, Jesus. Even though it, evilness is growing inside of me, I know. I know who my daddy is. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. And it is in your name. It is in your name. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I didn't mean to say all that, but thank That's you. all right, honey. That's all right. Letting the Lord use you. And we add our agreement. Yes, Hallelujah. And we command every evil thing to leave your body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We decree Isaiah 53 and 5 over your life and over your body that God was wounded for you. Hey, 
He was bruised for you. Yes, thank you. Hey, thank you. And thank by you. his stripes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. you are healed. Thank In you. the name of Jesus. Glory. Every disease has to bow to the name of Jesus. Jesus heal. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, keep her. Wrap your arms around her. Hallelujah. Touch her emotions, Father. Say to the Lord God, rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is against you. You will not stop me from praying. Get mad. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. I'm Jesus' servant. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Love y'all. I love you too, baby. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The strong shall bear the infirmities of the weak. Yes, God. Hold her up, y'all. Rabba siki andoro lobo shataya. Ida masi andara de Dios atalabahaya. In the name of Jesus, God, you're able. Said He for us to pray the prayer of faith. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We love you guys. Hallelujah. Hey, Masha. Hallelujah. Does everybody have everybody's phone numbers? Hallelujah. Okay. All right. I'm going to take care of that too. Amen. Love you guys. It is well. Decree and declare it. It is well. In Jesus' name. Love you guys. Friends, we'd love to see you on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. We are located at 5060. East 62nd Street, Suite 100. Look for the yellow sign. Hope to see you.